Hi there folks, it's Matthew Seville here with SLLounge.com and in this video I'm going to show you how to create an HDR image while also bracketing focus for very close subjects. Now you can see here I've got uh, some images that I've already processed in Adobe Camera Raw. I'm using Bridge CC, that's Creative Cloud, but this will also work if you have CS6, if you're not a Creative Cloud fan just yet. Uh, but anyways, I've got these, you can see that these are raw images and they're already processed like an HDR. That's because I have the new Nikon D750, which has pretty insane dynamic range. But let's, uh, I'll talk briefly about uh, if you bracketed your photos as well. First, let's open up these four photos in Adobe Camera Raw. I'm just going to double click them right here and they will open up like this. And you can see that they are, eh, well, they're slightly, uh, I, I bumped them a little bit uh, because my tripod was laying on the ground. It wasn't actually set up. I uh, do that a lot when I'm recording. I mean, uh, capturing uh, really, really super close-up shots. I just kind of lay the tripod down on the rocks or have a tabletop tripod that I use as well. But anyways, if you look very closely, if I'm going to zoom in here to 100%, in this image, I've got a uh, great sharpness all the way at the horizon and the corners and everything. But down here in the very, very foreground, things are just starting to get a little fuzzy. And that was at F13. And I don't really want to go much uh, smaller than F13 on a full frame 24 megapixel camera because I will start to get a little bit of diffraction. And to be honest, even if I had gone to F16 or F18 or whatever, I probably still wouldn't have perfect sharpness here and I would have less sharpness in the, in the uh, horizon. So let's look at this image. What I did was I bracketed focus from here to here to here to here, and I slowly just racked my lens from infinity to like one foot or six inches or whatever, uh, how far away these anemones were. If I zoom into 100% here, you can see that there's much more sharpness here in the foreground. I've got lots of great detail in these anemones here. But if I, if I scroll up and zoom out, you can see, yeah, that is not going to work. So let's process these images really quick. And then uh, let's open them up in Photoshop and I'll show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to select all here so that I edit them all at once. And let's just hit uh, Camera Raw Default so that we can talk about the preset system uh, that I'm using. This right here, I'm clicking on the Presets tab. This is the SLR Lounge preset system. And I use this image in a demo. Uh, earlier for the uh, preset system itself, but I wanted to get more in depth with that. Basically, since this is a landscape image, I'm going to select a vivid foundation import, not a soft foundation import preset, of course. Let's just start with color. And then, obviously, because this is an HDR photo, I'm going to be clicking on the dynamic range plus options. And let's just start, let's just go down the line plus plus, plus plus plus, and let's see what these are doing. What it's doing is it's maxing out my highlight and white recovery while maxing out my shadow and black uh, boosting. And also it's boosting the contrast just to help a little bit extra. If you, because if I go back to, if I double click this, it'll go back down to zero. You can see that the image is kind of flat if with zero contrast when I max out these settings here. Now, as I was saying before, if you bracketed these photos, because you don't have a camera that has this much crazy dynamic range, that's okay. All you need to do is use one of these other dynamic range booster ones, like this maybe, the dynamic range plus might work. And then you would take all of these images and you would have some that were, you would have to do it individually for each focus rack that you do. You would do an HDR for the, the horizon focus sharpness, you do an HDR for the foreground focus sharpness, and then you would merge all of those together using the same exact HDR settings in a, a program like Photomatix or something. And you would do all of that, and then you would get to this step with uh, TIFF images instead, but they would, also, they would be already processed like this. Uh, let's go back here to this. They would already be processed and looking something like this. Let's uh, dial in a little bit of exposure compensation to kind of get this looking where I want it to be. I'm also going to dial down the contrast just a little bit because I like to add that in the to the final image as a TIFF or a PSD image. I don't want it to be su overcooked when I'm going into this uh, PSD thing that I'm about to create here. 
So that's about it for a foundation image. This is looking nice and pretty. I've got great uh, sh uh, highlight recovery here, shadow recovery. If, I, if you can see that I'm using, I do have a red clip here. And if I click O for overexposed, uh, it will say that I've blown out these highlights here. But that's only because I'm using the sRGB picture control, I mean, uh, uh, color space. If I switch to Pro Photo or Adobe, then I'll, I'll definitely I'll have so much color space that you can see I've actually got uh, empty space up here. So I just like to use sRGB because that's the internet standard. And then I don't I just let these clip a little bit because I don't I don't mind. I know that if I use a printer that has a Adobe RGB as its printing profile color space or whatever, that these photos these colors will be okay. So this is about it. I'm going to uh, uncheck that. What we're going to do now is we're going to open all of these as layers in Photoshop. Actually, the shortcut of opening as layers is a Lightroom secret. In Bridge, in Camera Raw, all I can do is open them as smart objects. And I don't, unfortunately, have, want to use smart objects for what I'm about to do because uh, they don't work for that. So I'm just going to click Open Images, and it's going to update these originals here with the processing that I applied, and then it's going to open them all in Photoshop. What I need to do is I need to use Photoshop to align all of those features in the image and then mask and layer them together automatically so that I have perfect sharpness from the uh, infinity areas, the, the horizon, all the way to the foreground as close as I need to get. And to do that, we're going to have a two-step process in Photoshop. First, I'm going to line them all up and then I'm going to mask them. Just really quick, I'm just going to uh, click on this next image. I'm going to hit Command A, Command C, Command W, don't save, Command V, just to get all of these as layers here. And I'm going to repeat this process for all of these other images here. That you can automate this process, but I'm just kind of doing it manually just because uh, I like to. And then Command V, there's that last one. So as you can see, like I was saying, my tripod was bumping. Uh, it's not perfectly aligned. Sometimes even the, the, the little sea crabs or the anemones will move during the photo as well. And you're kind of uh, dealing with all that little bit of movement. So what you do to align everything is you sh shift click on all of the layers here. And then you go into edit up here and you do auto align layers. That will, uh, I usually do auto and then geometric distortion. Uh, I don't need to do vignette, vignette removal because I do that in Bridge or Lightroom or whatever program you're using beforehand. But I like geometric distortion. It just seems to help out a little bit. And then just click OK. And it's going to magically align these layers. It's not going to do any masking or anything. That's next. It's just going to magically align these layers to fit perfectly. And somehow it knows, even though this is partly out of focus in one of the images, somehow it knows how to perfectly line them up which is pretty awesome. This was a feature that came out actually a while ago in earlier versions of Photoshop, but I feel like, you know, the first generation of anything is usually kind of a uh, beta, you know, test kind of a thing, and it doesn't really work that well. But now in Creative Cloud and CS6, this feature does work very, very well. As you can see, it's going to take a little bit of a while, so I'm just going to uh, pause that and let it run. And here we go. Everything is lined up. Let's click uh, on these images, the layers, just to see very quickly and make sure that everything is perfectly aligned. How is that possible? I don't know, but they magically do it. So now what I'm going to do is the next step is going to just be hit edit and then auto blend layers. See how auto align and auto blend are right here? If you tried to skip that previous step and just go to auto blend, uh, it, it always gets messed up. But there's two options here, uh, panorama, which is pretty useful for uh, panoramas, <laughs> and stack images, which is what I want to do here. And you can see this little icon. It shows the shallow depth of field, and then the final images has lots of depth of field. You can use this technique to do uh, macro photos like this as well. But that's the process. I'm going to click seamless tones and colors. This option is great, very useful. And then I'm just going to click OK and let it run. And all it's going to do is it's going to create layer masks on these original images. It's not going to harm them or anything. See, here you go. Now you see that this image has captured most of the, the, the horizon area. This is a little bit of middle ground, middle ground, and then I've got the foreground here. This is super, super intelligent. Let's zoom all the way in by double-clicking on the mouse, uh, uh, double-clicking the mouse on the magnifying glass 
icon and you can see that I've got great sharpness here. I've got, uh, I've got great sharpness in the middle ground and I've got awesome sharpness in the foreground. Boom, we are done. I am going to, because this process is so automated, I'm just going to flatten this image and save it as a TIFF so that I can reprocess, do final processing in Camera Raw again. So let's just save it as TIFF uh, embed, embed Color Profile. Uh, whoops, I should have done that in uh, Adobe RGB. Oh well. Uh, I'm going to LZW or ZIP this thing. Uh, let's actually, let's, uh, let's go back to LZW because of that little uh, compatibility issue. And then uh, I'm just going to click OK. It's going to save this image. And by the time it's done saving, it's going to show. I'm going to Command Tab. Yes, I know you can't export this giant thing back to here. Here we go. I've got this back in Adobe Bridge. And there is my TIFF image ready to be processed. I'm going to double click on it again. Oh, I need to do, uh, let's close that. What I need to do is right click on it and say open in camera raw. This is a little trick. Sometimes you can set it to automatically open TIFF files, but I don't have bridge set up that way right now. I could crop all this later and uh, get in all that, but all I want to do right now is show you the final processing. I just want to bump up the, the uh, bump down the blacks a little bit. Let's hit U for underexposed and O for overexposed. It's going to, uh, let's see if I can get back. Now that I'm doing, I should have done this originally, but now that I'm doing this, yeah, it's still there. So let's uh, let's do let's play with the highlights a little bit. Let's give it a little bit more contrast, something like that. And it's going to look nice and saturated, but it's going to look pretty awesome in the shadows. I'm going to bump up the shadows here a little bit. The last thing I want to do is this is what I wanted to show you. I'm going to use the SLO Lounge preset system brushes to do a little bit of brushing here. And uh, here's my brush presets. If you want, you just hit K. Uh, the brush is up here, but I just always hit K when I'm ready to do brushes. The brush presets are here in this corner here. And what I want to do is nature and color here in the foreground. And it's just going to subtly juice things up. If I feel like I've gone a little bit uh, too much in one spot, I'm going to hold down Alt and see how it switches from add to erase. Maybe I'm just going to brush it off this area right here a little bit. And then I'm going to click new and go back here to sky, cloud, ocean just a little bit and go like that. And uh, whoa, that was a bit over the top. So I'm going to throttle it back a little bit. Let's, uh, let's dial down the contrast. Let's dial down the saturation because that's already pretty awesome. Let's uh, give it some highlight recovery instead of bumping up the highlights. Overall, I really like this. I might, uh, I might uh, hold down Alt and get it off this area over here because this is already quite saturated. But there you have it, folks. That is all I need to do to make this image look awesome. I think I'll make it a traditional classic 4 to 5 aspect ratio crop here. And I just want to get that last anemone down there in the bottom right there like that. And uh, there we go. Done. Thank you all so much for tuning in, folks. Take care, and we'll see you in the next video.